Hi, this is Brian Kim, and I'd like to share with you my first experience doing an IL exchange for a scleral fixated Acrios AO lens using Gore-Tex Suture. I have experienced doing iris fixated lenses as well as scleral fixated lenses using Gore-Tex Suture in a loop fashion, and I also have done uh, intrascleral haptic fixation with the scleral tunnels and, and glue. But I feel like this is the best of both worlds. It uses Gore-Tex Suture, which is extremely stable, and uh, this lens has four-point fixation, which will help prevent uh, jiggling of the lens in the eye. You can see I'm doing a pretty nasally and temporally. I marked the cornea uh, ahead of time to, to bisect the superior and, and inferior aspects of the cornea. I'm applying the gentle cautery here. I make a supero nasal and supertemporal paracentesis incisions. And then I'm going to mark the sclera 2.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus. And these two marks are 4 millimeters apart, which is uh, the distance you want for your sclerotomies for your eventual cortex suture placement. I'm using an MVR blade to make my sclerotomies. I inject this coat into the anterior chamber to stabilize it. And I perform my other sclerotomies on the other side. I'm using a three millimeter diamond blade to make my superior uh, corneal incision. I'm widening the incision a little bit to prepare for all the intraocular manipulation. I'm using my reverse Sinski hook, which I use for my DSEC, to prolapse the optic into the anterior chamber. In retrospect, it probably would have been just as easy, maybe easier to just use my intraocular forceps to do that. Here I'm having some difficulty grabbing the lens. The lens is rotated downward because the patient was blocked and uh, the eye was just rotated in a funny way. Uh, in retrospect, I should have put in a uh, traction suture to keep the eye more level for me. And so that'll be something I'll have to remember next time. I bisect the intraocular lens and use my intraocular forceps to remove each piece. The second piece has the haptics away from me, and, and uh, to make it easier, I grab the haptic. However, in doing so, I, I realize that the optic is getting caught on the iris. Thankfully, I didn't uh, put too much traction, and so I was able to rotate the optic and get it out pretty easily. This is a Lewicki anterior chamber maintainer, and I'm going to start my pars plane of vitrectomy. I first started on I A cut, uh, excuse me, on I cut A, and there was not much going on. I didn't see vitreous, and I didn't, I wasn't able to eat the capsular bag, and so I made a separate uh, paracentesis. And using this Maltzman uh, uh, device, I'm able to instrument. I'm able to retract the iris, and under I A cut, which I switched to setting now, I'm able to remove the cortical bag excuse me, the capsular bag along with uh, the cortical remnants. Uh, and I, I, I did this under direct visualization as I used the Maltzman to retract the iris going around 180 degrees. So I switch hands and I do the same maneuver from the other side. I use the Maltzman again to the retract the iris so that I can visualize the capsular bag with the cortical remnants. And I'm performing IA cut uh, vitrectomy. And you can see that uh, the centurion vitrector is very efficient in removing these pieces. I did not have any anterior chamber instability. Um, the eye, you could tell, was uh, very stable during uh, these maneuvers. And I think this large bore anterior chamber maintainer was helpful for that. I went and used the Maltzman to just double check to make sure I didn't have any uh, fragments of capsule and cortex left behind. And it looked absolutely clean upon inspection. I inject some intraocular uh, catalog, some triessence to ensure there's no vitreous, and indeed there wasn't. 
I'm applying, uh, placing some 7 cortex through the acreos lens. You want to put the suture through the, the loop from the top, and then you want to loop up and under from the other side. You do the same thing again. From the top, you loop down through the hole of the loop. You take the end of the suture, and then you go back from under and up through the loop so that you create a sling, in essence, uh, to uh, for the scleral fixation. This is a viscoat I'm injecting into the anterior chamber just to keep the anterior chamber stable. And I saw some videos where they did a two-handed technique of feeding the suture into the anterior chamber while grabbing uh, through the sclerotomy. I found this a little bit cumbersome, mainly I think it's because I didn't have, I don't have the muscle memory to do these maneuvers and so I decided it might be easier for me to just go in with one hand and place the suture in position and then go back through the sclerotomy site to retrieve the suture. This worked pretty easy for me, especially for my first attempt uh, and so um, I went ahead and did that for the other proximal side. And when I did that, um, this part of it was, was no problem, but when I tried to access the sclerotomy, I noticed that my anterior chamber maintainer was in my way. So the other uh, lesson was to make sure I put my anterior chamber maintainer away from any of the manipulation I'm going to be doing for the surgery. As you can see, I'm feeding the proximal side again here, and that's because I got my sutures turned around. And so the other learning point for me was to start with the distal sutures first and place them through the sclerotomies, and then the proximal sutures last. Because otherwise you might get them uh, mixed up and uh, the sutures might have a little loop in between them. This acreos lens is a hydrophilic lens. It's extremely soft and malleable. This is just a uh, McPherson forceps, and I'm able to uh, place it into the eye. Uh, the only problem was the teeth w wouldn't uh, open wide enough to release the lens, so I used a BSS cannula to just pop the lens posteriorly. As I pull on the Gore-Tex suture, you can start to see the lens um, center, which is uh, gratifying to see that the lens is in proper position after all that work. I, I tied, uh, I made two throws on this initial throw on this side, but I kept it fairly uh, slack. And then the other side, which I actually loosened after the this attempt because uh, it was a little bit too tight, I did a slip knot with that left side after the fact, which I edited out. But once I got the right tension, I tied them down. And I cut. So I want to definitely make sure I use a slip knot technique next time so that I don't have to be fighting the tension. The Gore-Tex suture is a little bit unforgiving. Once you pull on, on it and you have two, two or more throws, it, it won't budge. And so the slip knot technique is, is uh, definitely helpful. I tied the sutures and I buried the knot through the sclerotomies. I thought it was going to be difficult to bury that knot, but if you push down over the sclerotomy opening with your forcep, the knot pops in very easily without any difficulty. And I'm closing the main incision with tenonal on suture, and I do that twice here just to ensure a good seal. This case took me a little bit less than an hour to perform. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time uh, dilly-dallying just, just because I wanted to be sure I was doing everything right. Um, and obviously this video is highly edited. Um, but I felt pretty comfortable with all the maneuvers. It wasn't an extremely uh, tedious task to do this surgery. Just because I saw some a triessence in the posterior segment. I made another sclerotomy and put the Lewicki anterior chamber in and I did a little bit more uh, vitrectomy mainly to remove all of this uh, intraocular uh, catalog. I went into the anterior chamber and uh, removed the uh, viscoat as well and hydrated my incisions. 
so overall, I feel like this procedure is a, a great uh, mix of uh, technique and ease. The four-point fixation, four-point fixation using the Acrius lens, I think is great for stability. Uh, people complain about with two-point fixation with suture that the lens can jiggle and side to side and uh, does and can actually uh, torque. Uh, and tilt, which I think is a, is a problem. With four-point fixation like this, you don't have that issue. With intraskeletal haptic fixation, you didn't have that issue as well. However, it was just much more technically challenging and there's more risk for uh, problems, such as pupillary block. I injected myocol in the eye here to restrict the pupil. The pupil is nice and round. And so I, I really feel good about this technique. It's, it was my first attempt at doing this. Um, I obviously have to make some adjustments my second time around, and I hope uh, this was beneficial to you. Thank you for your attention to watch this video.